Hello, and welcome to the Warren College webinar on general education for transfer students. My name is Isabel, and I'm an academic counselor here at Warren College. And I'm Juan Figueroa, and I'm also an academic counselor here at Warren College. This webinar will be recorded, so you may refer to it again later. We will hold a Q&A session at the end of our webinar today, so please stick around afterwards to ask your questions. Let's get started. This webinar is part of a two session series. This is the first session. You should also plan to attend our second webinar, Gearing Up for Enrollment, that we'll be hosting on July 29th at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Both of these webinars are designed to help you learn all the ins and outs of planning for a strong start here at UC San Diego. We'll be covering the following in today's session. Enrollment timeline, WebRidge tutorial, planning for your first quarter, going over our general education requirements, university requirements, a tour of the degree audit, some helpful resources, and looking ahead. You're able to view your assigned enrollment start time on August 9th on Trident Week. At this time, you can post questions directly to the Warren Academic Counselors and Academic Department Advisors by clicking on the Ask a Question tab on the new Trident Advising Portal located in the Virtual Advising Center, also referred to as VAC. August 16th through the 22nd is the enrollment period for transfer students. During this time, you will be able to enroll in all your classes on WebRedge. In September, the WebRedge system closes temporarily to allow the academic departments to make any necessary class size adjustments. After this downtime, enrollment will reopen to all students and you will have an opportunity to add additional classes, usually through the first weeks of fall quarter. For more information about the enrollment timeline, visit warren.ucz.edu. Go to Programs and Events, orientation, transfer students, and the transfer timeline. To check your enrollment time, you will need to log in to tritonlink.ucsd.edu. Hover over classes and enrollment, then select WebReg. From there, you will be directed to the WebReg platform or you can click on fall quarter 2021. When you click go, you will be taken to the course enrollment site for fall 2021. At the top of the page, you will see the words, appointment time, where you can click to see what time you will, able be, you will be able to begin your enrollment. You will only be able to enroll in your classes between the times listed. All students are allowed to enroll in up to 19.5 units, including waitlisted classes, before the quarter begins. This unit limit increases to 22 units on the first day of classes. Do not miss your appointment time as classes will fill up. If you miss your appointment time, you will have to wait until course enrollment opens again for all students at the end of August. You have the opportunity to watch the WebRedge tutorial in Titan Link to gain a more in-depth explanation about how to navigate WebRedge when it comes to enrollment. You can view that tutorial by following this link. For fall 2021, there are three course texts that will be offered, in-person, remote, and hybrid. These course types are subject to change depending on COVID-19 developments. Both courses are going to be in-person. These courses will be delivered on campus with both students and instructors physically present in the classroom. Remote courses are taught online with instruction and all course materials provided remotely and asynchronously. Courses will use software such as Canvas and Zoom to deliver content. Lastly, hybrid courses will be both in-person on campus and remote components, and all course materials will be provided remotely for students to access at any time. Please refer to the following Trident link FAQ page for further information. For your first quarter, when you're creating your first quarter schedule, plan to enroll in 12 to 16 units, which is usually three or four classes. For example, schedules such as the one in the upper right-hand corner might be Warren Writing 100, one GE course, and one or two courses for your major. 12 units is considered full-time and all students are expected to be enrolled in at least 12 units each quarter unless they have applied and were approved for part-time status. You can access a part-time online application on Trident Link. Although students only need 12 units to be considered full-time, many students will take 16 units to comfortably meet their graduation requirements within two years. It may also be a good idea to enroll in 16 units so that you have the option to drop one class and still be enrolled in 12 units. Students must drop courses by Friday week four to avoid a W grade appearing on their transcript. 
or by Friday of week six with a W grade on their transcript. By now, you'll want to focus on planning your first quarter. Sometime during the fall, please come in for academic advising to discuss a long-term plan to graduate within two years. Read about the transfer GE requirements. Go to the Warren College website. Go to the Academics tab. Then click General Education Requirements. On the bottom half of the page, you will find the information that applies to you. Please read the page after the webinar and send any questions to our office using the Ask a Question feature in the new Trident Advising Portal. As a transfer student, your general education requirements depend upon the courses that you took before transferring to UC San Diego. First, you have to figure out what your transfer GE program is. If you completed IGETC, partial IGETC, or UC reciprocity, your GEs are going to be relatively straightforward. For context, IGETC is an optional set of breadth courses that students can take at a California community college prior to transferring to a UC or a CSU. If you completed all of the IGETC requirements or all but one or two of the IGETC requirements, the lower division GEs are waived at a UC or a CSU. However, if you completed partial IGETC, you are still responsible for completing those one to two IGETC courses at UC San Diego. UC reciprocity is for students that completed the lower division general education requirements at another UC campus before transferring to UCSD. If you did any of these transfer GE programs, you must send verification documents to UC San Diego. In the fall, students should contact Warren Academic Advising to check that we receive their verification documents. If you've completed IGETC, partial IGETC, or UC reciprocity, and we have verification documents on file, then your general education requirements consist of Warren Writing 100 and two upper division non-contiguous courses. As I mentioned before, if you completed partial IGETC, you're still responsible for completing any remaining IGETC requirements. See a counselor if this situation applies to you. If you did not complete IGETC, partial IGETC, or UC reciprocity, then the standard general education requirements consist of Warren Writing 100, Ethics and Society, Formal Skills, and either two programs of concentration or two area studies. Area studies only apply to students who have been accepted to a major within the Jacobs School of Engineering and whose major is a Bachelor of Sciences. If you're transferring from an out-of-state community college or a four-year university outside of the UC system, or if you're unsure which of these situations applies for you, you should contact Warren Advising about a transfer GE exception petition. A transfer GE exception petition is a way for advisors to evaluate the general education or breadth courses that you completed prior to transferring to UC San Diego. If you completed adequate breadth, this petition may be approved and you can be granted a transfer GE exception, allowing you to complete the transfer core GEs. If the petition is disapproved because you do not have adequate breadth, then you would complete the standard GE requirements. For most students completing the standard GE requirements, some transfer courses can be applied toward their programs of concentration or area studies. So contact an advisor if you're going to be completing the standard GEs. The transfer general education requirements for students with IGETC, UC reciprocity, or a transfer GE exception include Warren Writing 100, which must be taken for a letter grade, and two upper division non-contiguous courses. These courses are intended to add breadth to your education. Any two classes numbered, through one, numbered 100 through 199, except for 195 courses, count as upper division. These courses must also be from a discipline that is non-contiguous or unrelated to your major discipline. These GEs only apply if your IGETC certification has, be, has been received by UCSD admissions and has been posted to your academic records. Likewise, for UC reciprocity, your letters must be sent to the Warren College Academic Advising Office. Similarly, the transfer core GE requirements for students with partial IGETC or partial UC reciprocity consist of Warren Ready 100, two upper division non-contiguous courses, plus the one to two classes that are remaining to complete their IGETC requirements or partial reciprocity requirements. Um, but bear in mind that not all UC campuses will grant partial UC reciprocity letters. So if you completed most, but not all of the lower division GE requirements at a different UC campus, check with your advisor at your previous campus to see whether they will issue a partial UC reciprocity letter. If you followed the IGETC pattern, but you're missing one to two courses, check in with Warren Academic Advising because your degree audit will not automatically identify which IGETC courses you still need to take. 
we need to manually update your degree audit to have it reflect the appropriate requirements. For students who did not complete one of the transfer GE programs or for students whose transfer GE exceptions were disapproved, then the standard GE requirements consist of Warren Writing 100, which still has to be taken for a letter grade, um, but do bear in mind that Warren Writing 10A and 10B will be waived for students who completed two English composition courses prior to starting at UCSD, and that applies to almost all transfer students. You probably should not plan on taking Warren Writing 10A and 10B. You should probably plan on going straight into Warren Writing 100. You also have to take the Ethics Society courses, which would be either Phil or Poly 27 and Phil or Poly 28. It doesn't matter whether you take it as Phil or as Poly, it's the same curriculum. You just have to take 27 before you take 28. You also have to take two formal skills courses. However, most transfer students have already completed the formal skills requirement prior to transferring to UCSD. Um, typically math classes, logic courses, uh, computer science courses, things like that can be used for this requirement. And these can also overlap with your major requirements. Lastly, students are also required to complete two non-contiguous programs of concentration or non-contiguous area studies if you're doing a Bachelor of Sciences in Engineering. A program of concentration consists of six courses, at least three of which must be upper division, whereas an area study consists of three courses, at least two of which must be upper division. We'll go over what non-contiguous means in a minute when we discuss um, some more detail on the transfer core GE requirements, but if you have to do programs of concentration or area studies, you should contact a Warren Academic Advisor. You probably have transfer credit that applies toward your area study or PFC requirements. By now, you've heard us use the term non-contiguous courses a couple of times. Remember, Students with I get C, partial I get C, or UC reciprocity need to complete two upper division non-contiguous courses for their general education requirements, while students without one of these transfer GE programs need to choose a program of concentration or area studies from each of the non-contiguous disciplines. So each of these disciplines, sorry, each major at UCSD falls under one of the three academic disciplines, the humanities and fine arts, natural sciences, math and engineering, or the social sciences. Let's say that your major is biology. You would use this chart, which you can find on the Warren GE webpage, to identify the fact that your biology major falls within the natural sciences, math, and engineering discipline. You'll also notice that there's some programs that are interdisciplinary. For example, cognitive science. Some COGSI courses lean more toward the natural sciences, math, and engineering discipline, while other COGSI courses lean more toward the social sciences. We allow COGSI students to decide on their own which discipline they want their major to be categorized under for general education purposes. See a counselor for more information about this process and how it affects your GEs. Once you've identified which discipline your major falls under, the next step is to figure out which departments you want to choose your upper division non-contiguous courses from. Let's say, for example, your major is biology. Then you are not allowed to take contiguous courses in the natural sciences, math, and engineering. Instead, you can choose upper division non-contiguous courses from any of the departments within the humanities and fine arts or the social sciences. For instance, the student could take two history classes or maybe one philosophy class and one ethnic studies class to complete their upper division non-contiguous GEs. Another way to learn more about your GE requirements is to go watch some instructional videos we have posted. On the Warren College website, Go to academics, then click academic resources. When you're there, open the instructional videos tab where you'll find videos on topics such as transfer GEs and more. Beyond our GEs, the following university requirements must be completed by every UC San Diego student. You do not need to worry about many of these requirements right now, and you can also find them listed on our website under university requirements. First, we have ELWR, entry-level writing requirement. As transfer students, most of you will have satisfied this requirement before beginning at UCSD. AHI stands for American History and Institution Requirement. After week four, take a look at your academic history on TrinitLink and your audits to see if your AHI has been completed. If not, check the UCSD online course catalog for different ways to satisfy this requirement. Lastly, there is DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Requirement. The link to the list of approved DI courses can be found on our website un under University Requirements section. Additionally, each student must complete 35 of their final 45 units in residence at UC San Diego. 
A maximum of 25% of UCSD courses can be taken on a pass not pass basis. Before you confirm your class, you should always check to make sure you are enrolling in the class with the appropriate grading option, since most courses must be taken for a letter grade. To meet minimum progress, you are required to successfully complete 36 units each academic year. Every student must attain a minimum of 180 units for graduation, with 60 of those units being upper division credit. As an undergraduate UCSD transfer student enrolling later than fall 2019, you are allowed to enroll for six quarters to complete all requirements for your degree. If you reach this quarter limit and need additional time to complete those requirements, submission of a completion plan with college approval is required before enrollment will be allowed for additional quarters to continue working towards degree requirements. And finally, a cumulative GPA of a 2.0 is required for graduation. Academic departments may have different GPA requirements for major and minors, which you can find on their websites. At this point, we're going to play you a video that goes over what a degree audit is and how to use it. To access your degree audit, start on Triton Link. Go to the Advising and Grades tab and then select Degree Audit. The Degree Audit tool will compare your academic history to the requirements for your major, minor if applicable, and general education requirements for the college. While the Degree Audit loads, it sorts your courses into the right requirements, so after adding a fall course, go ahead and run an audit to make sure it counts for the requirement you expect it to. Click View Audit to view your Degree Audit. When you open your Degree Audit, it will look something like this. We're not going to go over all of the text on the Degree Audit now. You should read over your degree audit later and ask an advisor if you have any questions. At the top of the audit, you'll see the student's UC GPA. Your UC GPA is likely zero right now since most incoming transfer students do not have any coursework from the UC system. Below that, you'll see the student's earned plus work in progress units. This is the units they've already passed as well as the units they're currently enrolled in. If we continue to scroll down, we'll see the student's major requirements, first their lower division requirements and later their upper division requirements. Each requirement is broken down into several sub-requirements. Each sub-requirement has a completion status noted with one of these icons. Each icon indicates the completion status of the sub-requirement or the requirement. Green icons indicate that a requirement is already completed. Blue icons indicate that a requirement will be completed with the work in progress courses. Red icons indicate that a student still needs to take further courses to complete this requirement. Transfer courses are always noted with a T in front of the letter grade. Any completed UCSD courses are noted with the letter grade, and any work in progress courses are listed with WIP. Please note that any classes that you have planned or that you have waitlisted will not show up on the audit. Only classes that you are actually enrolled in will show up as WIP on the degree audit. You'll also notice that any requirements that are incomplete will specify how many more courses a student needs to take to complete this requirement, and it will also show what course needs to be taken in order to fulfill the requirement. This feature is useful when planning your fall schedule. For example, this student could see that they need to enroll in Chem 43A to complete the Organic Chemistry Laboratory requirement. If you continue to scroll down, you get to the student's upper division major requirements, which look a lot like the lower division major requirements. If you have any questions about your upper or lower division major requirements, contact your major advisors. This student has already passed two courses for a letter grade for their major, as well as one class for a pass no pass grading option. Usually, you need to take classes for your major for a letter grade option. In spring 2020 only, there was a special exception due to COVID-19, which is why this student has a pass no pass grade in their major. You should plan to take all your major classes for a letter grading option as this exception has expired. So you'll also see that the students UC graded units taken for their upper division major requirements are tallied right here. And then their upper division major GPA is calculated up here as well. All students need at least a 2.0 major GPA as well as a 2.0 GPA overall in order to graduate. Continuing to scroll further, we see the students war and general education requirements. Currently, this student's degree audit shows both of the transfer GE options. It shows the GE options for students that have completed GET-C, partial I GET-C, or UC reciprocity, as well as the general education requirements for students that have not completed I GET-C, partial I GET-C, or UC reciprocity. This is because UCSD has either not received or not processed the student's I GET-C certification. 
or perhaps the student did not complete IGETC. If you know that you completed IGETC, partial IGETC or UC reciprocity, and your audit still shows the or GE option by the end of fall quarter, contact Warren Advising. If you already know that you did not complete IGETC, partial IGETC or UC reciprocity, you can also contact Warren Advising and we'll change your degree audit so it only shows this set of GEs and is simpler to look at. If you know that you'll be completing the standard GE requirements of Warren Writing 100, Ethics and Society, Formal Skills, and either two programs of concentration or two area studies, the degree audit system is not smart enough to know which area studies or programs of concentration you will be pursuing based on your past coursework. It's your responsibility to contact Warren Advising to declare your PFC choices. After you declare your PFC choices, your audit will be updated and look something like this. For example, if this student declared a Perspectives of Social Science PFC, you'll see that they have three lower division transfer courses that count toward that requirement, and they've already passed one upper division course to count for that requirement as well. You'll also see that in their history PFC, they've taken one lower division class before transferring to UCSD, but they still need to take five more courses for this requirement. On the other hand, if we had received the student's partial IGETC certification, their degree audit would have their Warren Writing 100 and then two upper division non-contiguous requirements listed automatically. However, if you completed partial IGETC, any additional GEs that you need to take to complete IGETC will not be listed on the audit unless you contact Warren Advising. So contact Warren Advising if you completed partial IGETC so we can make sure that your audit displays the correct requirements. If you scroll past the GEs on any degree audit, you'll see the student's work in progress. You'll see the student's one spring course that still doesn't have a grade reported, and R stands for not reported. You'll also see their summer and fall 2020 work in progress courses. Continuing to scroll down, you'll also see this repeat, duplicate, or D section of the audit. Contact an advisor if any courses are listed in this section of your degree audit. The degree and diploma application requirement of the audit will not show up until you're a senior. Below that, you'll see the student's university requirements of entry-level writing, American History and Institutions, and DEI. Almost all transfer students meet the entry-level writing requirement as a condition for transfer admission. Contact Warren Advising if this requirement still has a red X. The American History and Institutions requirement is also completed through transfer credit for most students. However, this requirement will not show up as completed until midway through fall quarter. The Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, or DEI requirement, on the other hand, almost always needs to be completed with UCSD courses. In order to find courses that you can use for the DEI requirement, simply copy and paste the link listed on the audit into a new tab. Here, you will find a list of all of the approved DEI courses. You will notice that there's 10 pages of results, so it makes it easy to overlap the DEI requirement with requirements in your major or in your general education. Below that, you'll see the student's pass no pass tally. Students are only allowed to take a maximum of 25% of their total units for a pass no pass grading option. The degree audit continuously calculates your progress toward that threshold. At the very bottom of the audit, you'll see the student's elective courses. Electives are courses that a student has taken that do not directly count toward their major, minor, or GE requirements, but they do count toward the 180 units needed for graduation. If you completed IGETC, the degree audit will not show all of the individual IGETC requirements, and most of your IGETC courses will appear down here. If you see a course listed in the elective section of your degree audit and you believe it should be counted toward your major or your GEs, contact an advisor. For example, this student might want to ask their major advisor about using Chem 40A for their major requirements, since their audit shows that Chem 40A is still an outstanding course. If you ever have questions about your degree audit, don't hesitate to contact advisors in either your major or the college, depending on the requirement you have questions about. The best way to reach us is in the Virtual Advising Center. Hi, UC San Diego. We offer academic plans at plans.ucc.edu, which is a great resource for you to use as a guide in creating your course schedule. Some majors have two-year plans. If there is a two-year plan, it will be with the understanding that students have completed IGETC, UC Reciprocity, or an approved GE transfer program. If you have additional prerequisites or GE courses to take, make sure to plan for those as well. Here's a sample schedule for economics. You'll notice that there are two specific major courses listed for the first quarter, Econ 120A and Econ 100A. You can also look up your major requirements using your degree audit, reviewing your department's website, or contacting your major advisors 
by asking a question in the new Trident Advising Portal. On the top right hand side of each box, there are projected numbers of units for each quarter in order to graduate in two years. For example, this student is starting with 16 units for their fall quarter. The number of units that you should take may vary depending on the units you have earned from outside work. If your major does not have a two-year plan posted, you may adapt the four-year plan to your situation by adjusting the number of GEs in major courses. Since the Warren College motto is toward a life in balance, we want to include some tips for creating a balanced academic schedule. When you're building your schedule for the quarter, try to enroll in a balance of major courses and GE courses. Try balancing difficult classes with easy or fun ones. One resource that can help you out in this process is cape.ucsd.edu. You can also access this tool through the evaluations button on WebReg. This is a tool where you can see how students who have taken this course in the past or have taken classes with a certain professor in the past evaluated that class and that instructor. Pay attention to the number of hours students report studying on average when you're creating your schedule. This will help you plan ahead for how many hours you're going to need to dedicate to each of the courses that you enroll in. You should also plan to find co-curricular opportunities like clubs, sports, internships to create a balanced schedule. Now for looking ahead, assigned enrollment times will be available for you to view in WebRedge on August 9th. So please check those when the time comes. On August 16th, Enrollment will begin and last until August 22nd. Please feel free to send us your advising related questions through the Ask a Question tool in the Virtual Advising Center, also known as VAC, and continue to check your UCSD email for updates. At this time, we'll begin our question and answer portion. So if you have any questions, feel free to submit them now. Remember to ask only general questions that are not specific to your academic background. You can submit specific questions on the new Trident Advising Portal located in back after this webinar.